Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll have a look at the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the short term outlook with the UK Met Office run as well. Now yesterday we did highlight there was the potential we could be seeing an Indian summer pattern coming up and that's what the latest uh, or the uh, latest GM yesterday did show and we are still seeing the signs of it in today's runs. Most of the runs are going high pressure orientated. However, exactly the position of that high pressure is going to decide what sort of airflow we get and what air mass. And this time of year, we have very cold air masses to the north and still quite warm air masses to the south. So depending on very small shifts in the high pressure, it could mean we're going into a bit of an early winter pattern or we could be getting a late summer pattern or an Indian summer sort of style. But do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if you do have a look at the latest from the live radar, you can see we've got low pressure in and amongst the UK at the moment. You can see the big weather fronts that have spread eastwards, and they're now over parts of Scandinavia and parts of Central Europe as well. Now, over the United Kingdom, we just have a lot of heavy showers. Now, they do move through quite quickly on a brisk, uh, brisk westerly wind, but they have been quite heavy and have lined up um, in sort of lines of showers at times. They are slowly fading inland now, but there are still plenty in the west. And if you have been hit by some of these showers, which many of you um, have, you will have known about it. Um, if you'd been outside, there had been hail, potentially a bit of thunder and lightning mixed in there in a few spots. Um, but generally, it is just heavy rain for 10, 15 minutes and they blow through um, and things turn a little bit lighter. Um, but still, around the showers, still been plenty of sunshine. Um, and this sort of pattern is going to continue over the next few days. We still have a lot of low pressure around. But it does look like weather fronts potentially will be moving up, especially in the south, towards maybe Tuesday, Wednesday time as well. So if we do have a look at the latest from the GFS, you can see at the moment we've got this big low pressure system with the centre to the north of Scotland. That's why we've got a bit of persistent rain there at the, uh, at the time with the occluded front, but you can see the main sort of warm cold front system is now spreading out into Scandinavia and Europe. We're going to continue with this sort of pattern, but as we head towards Tuesday time, you can see a small sort of daughter low develops to the south of the UK. And if we go to the UK outlook, you can see it's not particularly deep air low pressure, but it is a sort of a centre of low, um, and it is going to mean we're going to be seeing enhanced rain in the south. Um, we could potentially be seeing some quite heavy rain there as well. Now, you can also see out in the Atlantic, we've got um, Hurricane Sam, or by the time it gets to the North Atlantic, it'll be ex-Hurricane Sam. Uh, and that's been a major hurricane out in the middle of the Atlantic. We haven't really talked about it um, in any of my videos because it hasn't in fact impacted any land mass. It's, it's just been out in the middle of the Atlantic, quite a photogenic storm. Um, but it is starting to head northwards out into the Atlantic, and it's going to be impacting the jet stream. Now, one thing it does do is something called warm air advection, which is, as you can see, within the uh, storm, we do have a lot of warm air wrapped around it. Now, it doesn't look like um, an amazing amount of heat at 850 HPA, but all the way from the surface up to quite high in the atmosphere, there's going to be a big wedge of quite warm tropical air. Now, what this does is it encourages high pressure because um, basic physics is warmer air, high pressure. Um, uh, and now those things can change, of course. We can get low pressure within warmer air, but generally we do s associate warmer air with higher pressure. So what this is going to do as this warm air pushes northwards is going to encourage the European high that you can see right here to build up over the top of the UK. And that's what we see. You see this big high that's centered over towards Scandinavia, Denmark into the UK as this warmer air is pushed up northwards you can see a very strong temperature contrast from Svalbard and northern Scandinavia around minus 10 at 850 HPA all the way to around 10 degrees at 850 HPA towards the centre of the high. Now what we could see as this high pressure builds in is southerly winds. Now you can see there's come quite warm air over towards Spain if we do have a look at the isobars they are coming in from a sort of a southeasterly direction. However, in this latest GFS, we get a reinforcement from the Azores High. And what that does is it pulls the high out towards uh, the middle of the Atlantic, where it's more inclined to be um, with the amplification of the jet stream. 
Now, in this scenario, we're actually putting in chillier northerly winds. Now, it's not amazingly cold, it's not going to be very wet, maybe a few showers around, and maybe quite cold temperatures overnight, but in the day, in daylight uh, hours, it's going to be, be pretty pleasant, getting up into the mid-teens. And as we head towards day 10, we continue with this pattern, um, we could even build a bit of low pressure in the far southeast, and this would be um, a very snowy pattern if this were sort of middle of the winter where we've got a lot of cold air available over Europe, but this time of year, it's not too bad. Um, but the difference, as we will see with the GEM in a minute, is this high pressure is a few hundred miles further east, in the centre of the UK, or just to the east of the UK. And what that does is it pulls up southerly winds, and we'll see that in a minute. But uh, carrying on through the GFS, you can see the high pressure just sits around, and eventually towards the end of the run, it does get broken away by the Atlantic. You can see some cooler polar maritime air mass is pushing back in. And you can see colder air is slowly building over, over the North Pole. We've had a quite encouraging um, early season for snow cover across um, Russia and Siberia, so it's looking decent for cold air over the North Pole, so all those snow lovers out there, it does mean this year, or this winter, it is looking, for, so whenever we get that northerly or easterly wind, if we do see that, um, which of course we'd hope we'd see uh, during winter, it might just be that one degree colder this year than it was, for example, last year, or the year before when we didn't have as much snow cover, um, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. So if we do have a look at the GM, and we'll see how that does compare all the way to day 10. Now, this is the midnight run. The 12Z hasn't quite fully come out yet, so I don't really want to show that effect, because it only goes out to about 6-7 days at this stage, um, at which point it would near enough agree with the GFS. So if we do go through, you can see low pressure pushing through early this week, and then we see that warm air advection, high pressure building in, and you can see we are starting to build southerly winds. You can see that warm air is starting to push up from the south. Now, we don't see that warm air push up immediately. However, another low pressure system develops out in the Atlantic and it does amplify the jet stream. And we do pull in this wedge of quite warm air. Now, it's not amazingly hot. It's not going to be in temperatures in the high 20s, for example. But we could see temperatures get to around 21, 22 degrees. And I'll show you the temperature charts in a minute. And the raw temperature charts are showing around net 19, 20 degrees, which you may think is not too exceptional. But for the middle of October, that is pretty decent. Um, and we'd expect, sort of microclimate-wise, to be seeing temperatures a few degrees higher than that, as ever with sort of the raw model data. It doesn't quite take into advantage or take into account all of the sort of microclimate factors. So we could be seeing temperatures a few degrees warmer that maybe even 25 degrees is possible on this run. Um, but again, as you can see, it is very, um, it has very much to do with this high pressure. And this high pressure is slightly differently orientated. We're bringing in a cooler air mass either from the north, the east, or just an Atlantic airflow. So yeah, it's all up in the air at this stage. Definitely is looking drier, which I think is encouraging for all. Um, and a lot of people will enjoy that instead of this sort of deluge as we've had recently. But how warm it gets and whether we do see an Indian summer is still up in the air. But we are still seeing the potential in some of the models. So if we do have a look at the GM at the uh, temperature, you can see at the moment temperatures really struggling around 13, 14 degrees today. Feeling pretty chilly. Uh, Monday afternoon, again, maybe 14, 15 degrees. Tuesday, really struggling around 10 or 11 in the south with rain pushing in. Wednesday, 14, 15 degrees once again. And by Thursday, potentially getting up to 17, 18 degrees just as that high pressure starts to build in. Now Friday, again, 18, 19 degrees, feeling pretty decent. Saturday, a few degrees cooler, 17, 18 maybe. Um, and then as we head through to Sunday, 17, 18 once again. And Monday, again, 19, potentially 20 in London, and then through to Tuesday, we see again, more widely 19 or 20 degrees, um, and yeah, that is towards the end of the run, and of course, as I said, these are raw model, uh, raw model data coming straight out of the computer, so again, as we take into microclimates, uh, as we, yeah, as we take in the microclimate, we will always be seeing temperatures probably a couple degrees higher um, than that in sort of the warmer spots um, in around sort of the Midlands, London area. We could be seeing 23, 24 degrees. Um, and the most important thing with this is that it will be sunny, it will be dry. So even if you only get 17 or 18 degrees, 
it's going to be feeling like it's in the low 20s. Whereas at times over the last week or two, we've had 17 or 18 degrees, but a lot of cloud, um, rain around, and it's f- f- uh, sort of felt a lot colder. So we also have to take into fact the feel like temperature as well. So if we do have a look at the e 2 fc that's just compared to the other two models. Again, we've got a lot of low pressure around at the moment. Um, and then as we move through, high pressure builds in. We get a brief southerly airflow. And you can see we do pull in some quite warm air. Look at the temperature deviation. You do see it's good. Two, four, six degrees above average. So pretty decent. Um, and as we head through, we see something similar to the GFS with the Azores high building in. Now, we don't see as much of that sort of northerly airflow. So if we have a look at the AM50 HPA temperatures, we do hang on to that warmer upper air conditions for quite a period of time. You can see it's quite warm just to our far southwest with 10 degrees plus AM50 HPA. And of course, there's only a few hundred miles difference and like seven, eight days time. That can shift very quickly within the model runs. And yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. As we head towards day 10, it does look like we are poised to be seeing northerly winds come in. So if you have a look, you can see low pressure out towards Scandinavia, direct northerly coming down and high pressure building into Greenland. So if we did run this on another couple of days, we wouldn't be surprised to be seeing a direct northerly um, from this high pressure. But for the time being, it's looking reasonably dry in the sort of longer term from the end of this working week. And the potential for seeing something quite warm uh, within some of the models. So we do, finally, for the sh- longer-term outlook, have a look at the GFS Ensembles. Now, it's only gone up to 15 October at this stage, as it is still updating. Um, uh, so it only goes up to the 12 days. Uh, we can also have a look at the 6Z, of course. You can see over the next few days, uh, generally, a few degrees below average, with quite a lot of precipitation coming through Tuesday, Wednesday time, as we do have that big rain band pushing up from the south then we see that big rise in temperatures to around sort of seven eight degrees at 850 hpa potentially giving temperatures again into the high teens and then we see a lot of divergence we see some ensemble members including the operational run going quite cool so you can see that operational run with that high pressure further west with northerly winds was a bit of more of an outlier the average is around the sort of the 1981 to 2010 mean but again, I doubt it's going to come out like that. It's either going to be going warmer than average or cooler than average. Um, and you can see there are a lot of scatter around. But it is looking dry, which is very encouraging. If we do have a look at the 6Z, you can see there are especially sort of 13th, 14th October onwards, which hasn't quite updated on the latest runs, on the latest ensemble run. You can see some going up above 10 degrees, 850 HPA, getting towards 13, 14 degrees, which would be really warm indeed, giving temperatures, again, as we saw by the GM run, into the low 20s. So it is still a possibility at this stage. If we have a look at the sea level pressure, sea level pressure, you can see on the up at the moment, and then generally it does look like higher pressure all the way to the sort of the 19th of October. There are, of course, some low pressure um, ensembles out there, but generally all are going for high pressure for a good sort of week from sort of around the 8th of October all the way to around 14, 15 October. Then there's a bit of divergence in around, of course. If we do have a look at Glasgow, see how that does compare. Of course, showing what we're going to be seeing in the north. You can see, once again, um, if we go back to the 6th, to give us a longer term outlook, you can see generally low pressure at the moment, recovers to high pressure with dry conditions around 8th, 9th, 10th of October, and then again, for a good sort of 5, 6, 7 days, we see drier conditions prevail, and then we do see a lot more scatter within the ensemble, so I'm going for much lower pressure. So if you do have a look at the 850 HPA and precipitation, just for the midday run, you can see around average at the moment, and we see a big rise up, a big tick up to around 10 degrees at 850 850 HPA, and then it stays around that, for the foreseeable future, around 15th of October. Again, operation run, a bit of an outlier. Some more um, precipitation spikes, of course, being to the northern extent of the high, um, with the high centred over sort of England, um, or maybe further east, or maybe further west. Unlikely to be shifted further north over towards Scotland. We could be seeing weather fronts pushing in, or maybe a few showers coming in off the Atlantic. So, not guaranteed to be completely dry, but doesn't look like there's going to be any massive deluges at this stage. If we do have a look at the 6Z run, just to have a get the last few days, and you can see a lot more scatter within that. But that's pretty normal, of course, this time of year, where we have massive contrasts in 
heat uh, in, in air masses. Um, by a few hundred miles, you can go from minus 10 at 850 HPA to plus 10 um, as in, a, in a couple hundred miles um, this time of year. So it's quite expected to see big swings, um, but at this stage, it's looking quite dry and warm, potentially, for the middle of October. So we do finally have a look at the UK Met Office run. We'll run through this quite quickly, as I know this video is getting quite long. So you can see at the moment, we do have a lot of showers packing in today. Those will settle down, mainly staying in the west and the south. Um, through tonight into tomorrow and then again a lot more showers around and then by Monday evening into Tuesday we see that very heavy rain spread up from the south spiral around sort of Tuesday morning and sort of linger through Tuesday evening eventually completely clearing by Monday morning uh, Wednesday morning so it could be a lot of rain around for a few spots where we see those weather fronts linger and then potentially more weather fronts trying to push in the west but sort of diminishing as they uh, try and push in, as we do see that higher pressure trying to build in the far southeast. Now, if we do have a look at max temperatures, you can see today only really got up to around 14, 15 degrees, feeling pretty chilly. By Monday, uh, you can see temperatures potentially 15, 16 degrees, but further west, we still have a lot of showers around, we will feel chillier, around 11, 12 degrees potentially. Now, as I said earlier, feel like temperatures will be a bit cooler than this because we have got a bit of a brisk westerly wind and we have showers around so of course it's going to feel a little bit chillier than that but where we do see sunshine of course it may be or may be pretty decent tuesday afternoon pretty chilly um wow only sort of 10 11 12 degrees for many areas a few spots escaping the rain maybe up to 14 15 degrees but generally it does look quite a cold, miserable, miserable day for Tuesday as we have that rain pushing in, especially across England and Wales. By Wednesday afternoon, we can start to see warmer air starting to push up from the south and see 16, 17 degrees as possible. By Thursday afternoon, 18, 19, 20 degrees. Um, and then by Friday, I'd expect um, it to be getting up again into the high teens, maybe even get towards 20 or 21 degrees potentially um, as we do see that high pressure build in. So yeah, quite mixed signals over the next few weeks, but definitely does look like we're going to be seeing a period of high pressure build in. Now the exact air mass we see is still a bit up in the air, still does look pretty decent though towards the end of this week. And of course, depending on your exact definition, we could be seeing an Indian summer type pattern. Certainly we're going to be seeing temperatures potentially get around 20, maybe 21 degrees. And maybe if we see some of the warmer sort of members at this stage, or the warmer third of the ensembles come off, we could be seeing temperatures getting to the low or maybe even sort of 24, 25 degrees um, come sort of early or late this week, early next week. And we'll have to keep an eye on that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.